Good morning. You're watching The Mint. I'm Andy Hodges. Let's have a quick look at closing prices for the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Top losers and gainers. African currencies, commodities, basic commodities, metal and energy prices. In our main story, the Mint speaks to economists on their forecast for Zimbabwe's 2020 economic growth prospects. The Minister of Finance, Professor Ntuli Mube, in his 2020 budget statement presentation, stated that he expected economic recovery in Zimbabwe of up to 3% for 2020, based on key assumptions, and further spoke about his inflation target. Economic recovery of up to 3% is projected in 2020, primarily premised on the following key assumptions. We expect, one, a, a, a better rainfall season supported by increased uh, support towards rehabilitation and development of, of irrigation infrastructure to sustain agriculture activities. Also, we expect better planning for increased agriculture production. Uh, uh, that's also critical. Number two, uh, we expect improved macroeconomic stability through continued fiscal and monetary discipline, as well as a, a, a substantial improvement in the balance of payments uh, position. Uh, this will also improve due to improved electric electricity supply through imports and other alternative sources of energy. These include harnessing of emergency power generation capacity from independent power uh, producers and projects. Uh, the extension of supportive tax and non-tax incentives to stimulate domestic production, uh, yet another factor. Uh, advancing um, uh, implementation of the ongoing ease of doing business reforms will also improve the investment climate and be a positive factor as well. And finally, uh, increased investment by both government and the private sector is yet another factor that will impact positively on the pros prospects of the economy. Similarly, monthly inflation is expected to fall to single uh, digit from the first quarter of 2020 to close the year at 2% on the back of commitment by Arab Reserve, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, to implement tight reserve money supply targeting framework uh, as announced in the second 2019 monetary policy statement. The Mint in a recent interview got the views of two economists, Brains Muchemwa and Persistence Guanyanya. First, let's hear what Brains Muchemwa had to say and his forecast for 2020 growth in Zimbabwe. I think uh, what is quite clear is that um, running an economy is not an easy in this job um, uh, and uh, in particular when you look at the challenges that we had in 2019 uh, we had a lot of optimism in the beginning of the year but uh, things turned out uh, you know quite the opposite and um, when you look at um, the projections by the Minister of Finance 3% 
Look, it's, it's a modest projection, and the fact that the government would have to do a lot in terms of uh, social assistance and bring in subsidies uh, to just cushion the vulnerable, uh, it will be very difficult to expect growth. I think at the worst case, we should probably be minus 5, minus 6% 6 for 2020. Although their forecast numbers may have differed, Persistence Guanyanyo also saw little to negative growth in the Zimbabwean economy for 2020. Persistence further spoke about the effects of monetary reforms on the nation. We don't expect uh, any growth in this economy. In actual fact, we expect a contraction of the economy. And I would want to put this as worst case and best case and best case scenario. On the best case, we also ex we expect a growth, but a very small growth of uh, around 1.7% uh, uh, thereabouts. But on the best case scenario, we expect the economy to still contract, but a small contraction of around 2.5%. So chances are the economy is going to contract this year. There are very high chances the economy is going to contract this year. And also importantly, the effects of monetary reforms. Policymakers did not even anticipate the effect of monetary reforms. So economists are seeing neg negative growth for 2020 in Zimbabwe in a range of between minus 2.5 to minus 6% against the Ministry of Finance budget forecast of up to 3% growth. Quite a large variance in numbers. If Zimbabwe once again suffers a debilitating drought in 2020, leading to a possible increase in subsidies for the most vulnerable in our society, combined with pressure on the exchange rate, then Zimbabwe may once again have a tough year. Authorities must keep on top of the situation and plan well in advance for any eventuality. Crisis management and late response to bad economic scenarios will not do. 2020 must be the year when government, with the assistance of the private sector and all Zimbabweans, gets the economy back on track for the good of us all. UNICEF has announced that the first African Drone and Data Academy, ADA, opened on Wednesday in Lilongwe, Malawi. The move is part of efforts to promote the use of drones in programs and services that will impact the lives of children and young people. UNICEF's Executive Director Henrietta Foray says humanitarian and development program delivery in Africa and beyond can benefit significantly from the application of drone technology. Four said the African Drone and Data Academy will be instrumental in equipping young people with the skills they need to use the technology to benefit children and their communities. The school's first class is comprised of 16 students from Malawi and 10 students from across Africa. The US-based Virginia Polytech Institute and State University, Virginia Tech, helped develop the curriculum following the successful delivery of its training workshops in Malawi since 2017. The course will combine theoretical and practical methodologies in making, testing and flying drones. By 2021, the goal is to train around 150 students to be able to build and pilot drones. Additionally, by 2022, the Academy will establish a two-year master's degree program in drone technology in collaboration with the Malawi University of Science and Technology. Drone law in Zimbabwe is overseen by the Civil Aviation of, of Authority of Zimbabwe, CAAZ. The regulations are officially known as the Civil Aviation Remotely Piloted Aircraft Regulations 2018. We thought we would look at some of the most interesting potential applications of UAVs in Zimbabwe. Firstly, fighting crime. Law enforcement agencies use drones for mass surveillance, crime investigation, search and rescue operations, locating stolen goods and surveying land and infrastructure. In one 2017 case, Virginia police in the USA used a drone equipped with thermal imaging to locate a suspect hiding in the woods. Number two, protecting wildlife. Mapping large tracts of land, spotting poachers, tracking endangered species, herding and scaring dangerous predators. Thermal vision technology are all strategies that have been tried and proven across the world. Zimbabwe stands to benefit from any incorporation of drone technology in its wildlife conservation efforts. Number three, monitoring illegal activities. Illegal sand mining in urban areas, diamond mining and gold panning in rural areas like Chiadwa are problems that police and environmental agencies like EMA constantly grapple with. Drone monitoring can help mitigate these activities. Number four, improving agriculture. Drone technology can be used by farmers and the government in areas such as land mapping and imaging. Data collection on crops, soil pests, livestock tracking, yield monitoring, crop spraying and herding. 
Of course, Zimbabwean media is number five. At live sporting events of whatever form, football, of course, brings to mind, media organization drones can give viewers more aerial and panoramic shots of the events, and this is already in use at certain events in Zimbabwe. Number six, disaster relief. In the aftermath of Cyclone Nidai and other similar national crises, the use of drone technology as a disaster management tool cannot be underestimated. UAVs can be used for both damage assessment and rapid response, certainly saving the government time and other resources, and even more importantly, saving lives. And of course, business is the last thing. All the areas I've already mentioned have commercial potential and therefore qualify as using drones for business. So in addition to those, drones can be used in many industries such as real estate. It is clear that drone technology is here to stay and if used effectively and properly can be a valuable tool to law enforcement, business and agriculture. Profit at Wall Street giant Citigroup beat expectations to post a 15% rise in fourth quarter profits with solid growth in both its consumer and institutional banking arms. Citigroup shares had rose on the news as the lender continued the strong start U.S. earnings season, which had earlier seen rival J.P. Morgan Chase post a record annual profit. The third largest U.S. bank's profit rose to $5 billion in the final three months of 2019, up 4.3 billion a year earlier. This took earnings per share to $2.15, well above analysts' predictions of $1.84. Total revenue grew 7% to $18.4 billion, with strong growth in each of the North American, EMEA, Latin America, and Asia regions. City's chief executive, Michael Corbett, called it a strong finish to the year. He added, due to good client engagement, we drove balanced growth across our products and geographies. The bank's institutional clients group, which includes investment banking, saw revenue grow 10% to $9.4 billion. Bond trading income rocketed 49% year-on-year to $2.9 billion, a figure flattered by a poor end to 2018. Yet it also reflected heightened activity in the bond market due to geopolitical uncertainty. As Citi's consumer arm, revenue grew by 5% year-on-year to $8.5 billion in the fourth quarter. Growth was particularly strong in Latin America, hitting 10%. As reported by the Wall Street Journal, big banks' demands for longer-term Federal Reserve liquidity has flared and the Federal Reserve extended its plans to intervene in markets into mid-February. Into mid the Federal Reserve Bank of New York said it intervened twice via repurchase agreements or repos. Eligible banks drew $47 billion in overnight liquidity from the central bank, less than $120 billion the Fed was willing to provide. But the 14-day repo saw banks offer the Fed $43.2 billion in securities against the Fed's $35 billion cap. Collectively, the Fed added $82 billion in temporary liquidity to the financial system. On Monday, the Fed had added $60.7 billion overnight liquidity. Fed repo interventions taken in U.S. Treasuries, agency and mortgage bonds from eligible banks in what is effectively a short-term loan of central bank cash collateralized by the securities. When the Fed last updated information on its holdings, it said its balance sheet stood at $4.11 trillion as of January the 9th versus $3.8 trillion in September. About $210.6 billion in repo interventions were also outstanding then. Fed repo interventions are aimed at keeping the federal funds rate within the 1.5 and 1.75% range and to limit the volatility of other money market rates. The Fed restarted its repo operations last September after unexpected market volatility and steadily increased the sizes of its operations. On Tuesday, the New York Fed announced its plans to press forward with overnight and longer-term repo operations until at least February the 13th. It maintained the maximum size of overnight operations at $120 billion. The Fed had initially planned to end its repo interventions at the end of the month, but continuing issues in money markets have extended the horizon for the effort. Some on Wall Street think the repo operations could continue into the early summer. Meanwhile, the Fed is weighing other options, like the adoption of new tools or new paths to liquidity as a longer-term solution. I'm Andy Hodges, and you've been watching The Mint. Please follow us on our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, our website, ztn.co.zw, and on YouTube, under ZTN. Your comments are welcome via our Twitter handle, at ZTN News, and on Facebook. Join us here on The Mint every weekday morning at 6 a.m. Central African time. Goodbye. Have a profitable business day and you will be safe.